Welcome back to the channel. This video is on igneous rocks, igneous petrology. We're looking at mafic or mafic rocks, what they are, how they form, their chemical composition, and how they differ from other types of rocks like felsic, and also where we'd find these kind of rocks on the Earth's surface. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Igneous petrology just means the study of igneous rocks, how they form, the types and characteristics. Now, mafic or mafic rocks, you can say the word either way, but I'm going to say mafic. Mafic rocks are based on silicate minerals because silicate mineral group is the most abundant mineral group on the earth in terms of geology. And this is based on the amount of silica or SiO2 or SiO4 in its composition, how it's made. And the tetrahedron shape is the silicon element in the middle and the four oxygen elements on the outside. And mafic rocks are lower in silica compared to the other type of igneous silicate rocks, which is felsic. Mafic is lower in silica than felsic. An effective way at classifying or differentiating between felsic and mafic rocks are the characteristics. So mafic rocks are generally higher in density in terms of how much mass in a given volume. For example, basalt, which is a very classic, well-known, common mafic igneous rock, is between 2.8 to 3 grams per centimeter cubed. Gabbro, another common mafic igneous rock, is 2.7 to 3.5 grams per centimeter cubed in terms of its density. Then we have its composition. Now, mafic, the word, is derived from two elements, magnesium, Mg, which is the FIC in the word mafic comes from the Latin word for iron, which is ferrous or ferrum, which is the Fe. So mafic rocks or mafic rocks are the combination of magnesium and iron so they are higher in magnesium and higher in iron with a lower silica content between 45 to 52 or 55 percent in weight then we have the color so the different characteristics and different composition will create and form the various colors of these rocks that form from the cooling magma or cooling lava. And generally, mafic rocks are darker in color, so the dark grays and the blacks, and a little bit easier to differentiate between the felsic rocks that are sometimes lighter colors and multicolored, because generally, mafic rocks are usually one color. As mentioned, the characteristics of mafic rocks differ distinctly from felsic rocks in terms of the color, the density, and the silica, and the composition. However, the clear distinction also comes in the minerals that make up these mafic rocks, derived from mafic lava or mafic magma. Now, the four main minerals are the amphibole, the pyroxene, and olivine, and the calcium-rich Plagioclase feldspar. Now, feldspar is a German word for general field mineral, but olivine, pyroxene, and amphibole are all on the discontinuous series of the Bowen's reaction series in the higher temperature range. The temperatures that are above and around 1000 degrees Celsius, so these are the first minerals to really form in the cooling magma in the ground, and they form the basis for all of these mafic rocks and ultra mafic or ultra mafic rocks and on the continuous side between both calcium and sodium and potassium when you add it into the feldspar into the composition the plagioclase that is involved with mafic are the ones that are really hot the same temperature as olivine which involves the calcium rich plagioclase feldspar as the magma will get colder the calcium will get replaced by sodium and then eventually by potassium but this only happens in different rocks in mafic rocks we're looking at just the calcium rich feldspar mafic rocks have a certain origin or place of formation due to its composition and due to its characteristics so mostly the felsic rocks are continental based where the magma is derived from rock melting 
in and around the continents, which includes a lot more of the silica content and different elements and minerals. However, the mafic rocks, they derive from deeper down in the Earth's mantle, in the upper mantle, in the asthenosphere, in the low velocity zone, between 150 to 200 kilometers in depth. However, they also do derive from much deeper into the mesosphere or lower mantle, whereby they come up through hotspot regions on the Earth's surface, whether it's continental hotspots or a mid-ocean ridge with convection currents, or very likely an oceanic hotspot, whereby the magma is moving up through the mantle to the Earth's surface and erupting and flowing on the Earth's surface through various locations around the planet. Again, generally tectonic and hotspot locations. As with any igneous rock, mafic rocks can form through intrusive environments, through the cooling of magma, slowly with larger crystals, and also through the flowing of lava on the Earth's surface in an extrusive environment, whereby it's volcanic in nature versus plutonic, and you get these different common rocks that form from either the cooling mafic magma or mafic lava. So the first one is basalt. Basalt is very common, majority of the ocean floor, the ocean crust is composed of basalt and it makes up about 90% of all the volcanic magmas that are erupting on the surface. So basalt is around 49% silica, 14% aluminum oxide, 8.5% iron oxide and 11.3% calcium oxide. Again, these are the main elements that separate mafic or mafic rocks from felsic, being either high or low in these different categories. Then you have gabbro, very common intrusive rock, the opposite to granite, basically. So granite is a felsic magma rock, and gabbro is a mafic magma rock. So gabbro has about half of silica oxide, about half silica, about 15.5% aluminum oxide, and about 7.5% iron, and about 10.8% calcium oxide. So very similar to basalt. And again, we have diabase. Diabase is another common intrusive mafic rock, similar to gabbro, but a little bit less silica and a little bit less aluminum with a bit more iron and around the same amount of calcium oxide. So again, these three common mafic rocks demonstrate the difference and the higher levels of iron and aluminum and calcium oxide in the composition, but with a little bit less silica. So that's going to mean these magmas will flow quicker because the silica, one of the main effects of having silica in magma or lava is the viscosity. The higher the silica, the higher the viscosity, the thicker and slower and more resistance to movement the magma or lava has, whereas the lower silica, which these mafic rocks have, it will flow quicker. So the velocity will, will increase and the viscosity will decrease. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.